total recall. Virtual reality lets us explore faraway places and do virtually anything. But could VR actually help you recall information better than just reading it on a desktop or tablet? An NSF-funded research team at the University of Maryland recruited 40 UMD students unfamiliar with VR to test their theory. So each participant was placed in a virtual environment with 21 faces. They were given a few minutes to familiarize themselves with these faces, and then after a short break period, those faces would be replaced with numbers. And each participant would then recall which face was at each numbered location. Many of the participants said the immersive presence while using VR allowed them to focus better. The team's findings were exciting. We found an overall 8.8% improvement in recall for the head-mounted display as compared to the traditional desktop. And that 40% of our participants actually performed about a letter grade better than they would have otherwise. While further study is needed to examine the impact VR-based training would have on levels of learning from elementary school to college, the team feels the future of education and innovation will benefit greatly from the use of these new visual technologies. Bringing computers and us into the same environment is really exciting for me because it, it unlocks our full capabilities and it expands the capabilities that our machines have. And that's what gets me really excited. Memory makers. Have you ever struggled to remember where you parked your car or what you ate for dinner last night? Well, an NSF-funded team of scientists, neurologists, and neurosurgeons at Cedars-Sinai have found that the neurons that produce dopamine may play a critical role in forming these episodic sorts of memories. Patients watched a sequence of images, some they had seen before, some they hadn't. The researchers found that certain neurons fired only when the patients were shown new images they had not yet seen. The study provides insights into how we form memories and could lead to potential new treatments for memory disorders like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. Lost in emotions. We all know that being a teenager can be full of difficult, sometimes stressful emotional experiences, but a new study sheds light on a possible reason why. NSF-funded researchers discovered that adolescents don't distinguish between negative emotions as clearly as younger children and adults. The Harvard University team tracked how 143 participants ranging in age from 5 to 25 reacted to negative images using words like angry, disgusted, sad, scared, and upset. The team found that children tend to report feeling only one emotion at a time, producing differentiated but sparse emotional experiences. Meanwhile, Teens were more likely to experience emotions at the same time and had difficulty distinguishing between them. But adults tended to feel several emotions simultaneously and could distinguish between them. The team says struggling to differentiate emotions could be confusing to teens and may be connected to heightened risk of mental illness often associated with adolescence. While more research is needed to determine a link between low emotion differentiation in adolescents and teenage mental disorders like anxiety and depression, the team hopes to use these findings as a springboard to learn more about what happens when teen emotions go awry. For more information about these stories, visit us at NSF.gov. This is NSF Science Now. I'm Dina Headley.